Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be making this, an Edwardian morning dress. I first got interested in morning dress about a year or two years ago. I did some research, I've done a video, I've done a blog post, I'll link it up below, everywhere. The dress is technically still under copyright somehow at the Met, uh, but I will insert a screenshot of the website and a link down below. Usually when I become interested in a dress, making it gets it out of my system. However, this time I don't think it has. I think I'd like to make it again, but with silk. There is one photo of this dress at the Met, so I had to do a lot of guesswork. And I actually since have contacted the costume collection team at the Met, and they've sent me some more photos and some more information, and I, I guessed a few things wrong. So I think making this again is a good plan. Let's see how I made this wearable mock-up. But first, let's talk about our sponsor. Today's sponsor is... Me. This has been a while in the making, but I've just launched my Patreon. Some of the rewards include exclusive Patreon videos, polls, posts, close-up photos of the costumes, and more construction details. If you like my videos and my work, please consider supporting me. I will add the link in the description box. Let's get to sewing. Firstly, many apologies about the footage for this video. As you can see, my camera struggled a bit with the black fabric. For this project, I really wanted to mimic the decadent silk of the original at the Met, but alas, I could not afford it. I was trying to keep from buying synthetics, so I managed to get some affordable cottons for this. I got a lightweight black herringbone cotton for the fabric for the structure layers, and then super affordable black cotton voile for the outer layer. After being washed, the voile in particular got a little bit more crinkly, which was the effect I wanted. The bodice will be made of two layers, a structured layer and the voile over layer. For this, I started out with a truly Victorian pattern for the 1903 shirtwaist. I found this to be a great pattern. I made a mock-up and fitted it until it was no longer a loose blouse but the basis for my bodice. This was cut out of the black herringbone. I added seam allowance and was careful with transferring the darts. For the darts, I despise carbon paper and sometimes can't be bothered with thread tracing, so instead I pinned along the markings I had from the pattern and then connected the dots on the other side of the fabric. The voile over layer was cut faithfully to the truly Victorian pattern, with one small change, where I trimmed the centre front roundness that creates the pigeon breast. I trimmed it a little as I thought in terms of proportions and the length of my torso, this was a little long. The first step was to sew the darts. For smooth darts, I usually do not backstitch at the tip and instead knot these threads by hand, which usually leads to a smoother dart. It was easier to prep the back panels before they were attached, so I turned in the back raw edge by one inch and a half and ironed. I then pinned all the side seams and shoulder seams. I ran one thread with gathering stitches along the back edge of the shoulder and pulled slightly to ease the back shoulder edge to match the front. These seams were all sewn by machine.
I did the same process to the overlayer, getting it into one piece. I then sewed two rows of small running stitches across the front panel. I pulled on the threads to gather the fabric down to the right measurement. I pinned the voile overlayer to the bodice and adjusted the gathers. I pinned all the way around the neckline, armholes back and lower edges and basted. The bodice has a section of shared fabric at the top. I cut a piece of voile and marked rows 3 quarters of an inch apart and sewed rows of stitching by machine. I then pulled on the bobbin thread to gather them up until they were loosely the right measurement. I put my bodice on my dress form and pinned it into place, cutting away the bodice layers. I then sew the shirt section in place by hand. The next step was to work on the lace bits, whatever they're called. I draped a shape on my dress form. Originally I had planned to just cut them out of the crinkle voile, but it wasn't dramatic enough, so I decided to make very small pleats on the voile to mimic the fabric in the original, somewhat. This took for freaking ever. At first I tried to pin and hand sew the pleats, but one hour and three inches later I decided to instead freehand it at the machine. I sewed slowly and used the pin to turn under the edges and sewed as I went. I then cut the appropriate shape out of this pleated fabric and backed it with interfacing to keep the pleats in place. I spliced my, spliced, spliced? I spliced my lace in half. I tried gathering it by machine, but it was having none of that, so you know what that means. Oh yes, gathering lace by hand. I sewed one row, yes just one row of running stitches across the top of the lace and pull it until it was roughly the right measurement. I actually really loved gathering lace. I then turned the raw edges of the pleated fabric by a quarter of an inch and pinned the lace on top. I then added one more layer of voile where the raw edge had been ironed under two, effectively sandwiching the lace and all raw edges. This was stitched by hand with small prick stitches. For the skirt, I used this 1904 drafting manual by Margaret Blair, available freely at archive.org. I'll put the link in the description box. I could not be bothered to make a mock-up, so instead I drafted it straight onto the fabric. 
I am so chaotic neutral in this video, who am I? This was actually pretty darn easy to draft. I found it much easier than the keystone guide, so I would recommend it. This card is made up of seven panels with the center front cut on the fold. I flared it out considerably to add a train. I cut it out of the herringbone and the voile, making the voile layer a little larger across all panels. And then, then the French seaming hell began. I think it took me a whole evening. French seams are when you sew the fabric edges wrong sides together first. Then that seam is pressed open, trimmed back, and then you turn to the wrong side and press along that seam. Then you sew that seam again from the wrong side, encasing the original seam. This is usually better for lightweight fabrics and creates a durable seam. And yes, it was time consuming, but it didn't take as long as felling all those seams by hand. I then added a placket to the back of the skirt. I don't go into a lot of detail here because I finally filmed the skirt placket tutorial video which will be coming soon. There was also a pocket installation that went exactly like in my walking skirt so I'll just link that below. And by exactly I mean exactly. I made the wrong gap for it in the front panel instead of the side in the herringbone layer and then fixed it. And guess what I immediately did next? The same mistake on the voile. Let's move on to something usually as frustrating but that actually went pretty well. The sewing gods were trying to make up for the skirt fiasco. I actually slightly altered the pattern included in the truly Victorian blouse, I winded it and shorted it. This is, oh, did I mention this is for the sleeves? <laughs> this is cut out of the voile, I then used the same pattern but shortened it just below the elbow and cut it out of the herringbone. This is actually the same construction as in an Edwardian dress I saw recently. I finished the herringbone bottom edge by turning it inwards twice and sewing it down. Both side seams are sewn independently as French seams and then I fit the smaller herringbone later layer into the voile. I pin across the top edge and baste it. The sleeves are then fitted into the armhole and slightly guided at the top to fit. It's sewn together by machine. We now interrupt this casual sewing because I just received the most lovely package from a subscriber. It was so nice and the letter is just amazing. I just wanted to say a big, big thank you, Barbara. Okay, back to sewing. I 
I then tried on the bodice and marked where to put the elbow slit. I cut into the fabric and turned the raw edges under twice, pinning. I then trimmed the some lace and pin it over top, and some lace tape over to hide the raw edges. This is all sewn in one fell sweep of the needle. I filmed little of the rest of the process since it was a mad dash to finish this in time. I cut out the collar from one layer of wild using the Truly Victorian pattern. I then added some lace, which was hand sewn. I set in the collar by machine. The bodice is then pinned to the skirt and sewn together by hand with one layer of back stitches. This gave me a lot of control by hand, almost like basting stitches. I then reinforced it by sewing by machine one eighth in the seam allowance. I placed the lace bits onto the bodice and secured by hand with small tacking stitches at a few different places. Also top tip, it's easier to hem a skirt when it's not attached to the bodice. <laughs> I cut out the facing by cutting strips of the herringbone and sewing them together. I ironed one edge inwards by half an inch and then sewed it on, right sides facing each other. The facing is then turned inwards and ironed nicely and stitched down. The over layer was hemmed by turning the raw edge under twice and sewing by hand. The last detail I wanted to include was some decoration on the sleeves around the elbow. At this point I discovered I have a gathering foot for my sewing machine and my world was changed. This thing is freaking magic. I sewed two rows of stitches for each elbow band. I then cut them out with pinking shears and I made sure they were the right size. Pin them to the sleeves at the elbow and hand sew them into place. Did I say that was the last bit? <laughs> Never mind. I also added a small belt, which is very Edwardian. This was drafted to be a curve with a dip at the front. I cut it out of a herringbone and voile layer, then interfaced the herringbone. It's sewn together with right sides facing each other, then turned out. Note, this was hella hard. Leave a larger gap.
Press nicely, close the gap and add two hooks and hands on bars. And done. Overall, I really like this dress, but I am considering it more like a wearable mock-up of what the real dress will be. I think I would like to get closer materials and, and get another try at this one. Thank you for watching.